Hello, everybody. Welcome to Shinjuku Station. This is the busiest station in the world. It's one of the craziest if you ever walk around here. It's also the most fun, and I did an episode about uh, Japanese food, restaurants, uh, places to go, drink in this area recently on the main channel. But I thought I would take you live. Because we're fun to do it. How you doing, everybody? Um, I actually came here to take the postcards for the postcard clubs for those that are supporting on Patreon. I sent them from here. It's kind of a, a, a cool postcard this month. Check it out here. I'm, gonna be, I'm even going to show you in this live stream where exactly I took this picture. This is one of the great shots where um, all the uh, media companies, whenever they show Tokyo, they go to this where you can see the, the rail lines going by and all the lights. Well, these postcards are on the way if you're a Patreon supporter. It's not too late to get yours as well. Uh, let's get let's get moving because we got to go. Long way to go. Um, let me show you a map of where we're going to be heading. Right now, I am uh, here. You can see that blue spot. We're going to cross. Actually, we're not going to cross the street. We're going to start from this point and walk around towards uh, the. Uh, I believe it's the east side of Shinjuku, where you can see the Metropolitan Building. Walk around to Kabukicho, which is in the top right, and then loop around where we're going to be able to see a bunch of stuff. Did that guy, was that guy wearing a Michigan hat? Ugh. There's also a lot of construction going on around here. Shockingly, I think it was Odaku. The entire Odaku building is destroyed. So you're gonna get a chance to see that the other side of Shinjuku. Uh, this bridge gets you over towards the Southern Terrace, which is this side. This is the new Shinjuku station. Over there, there's a uh, Tokyo Han, Takashimaya, department store. The highway buses are uh, on the other side down there um, towards Yoyogi. Beautiful sunny day, uh, kind of warm. I was not prepared for this. I shouldn't be wearing a jacket. <laughs> I'm protected against all the elements now. But you can see uh, over there on the left side, that, egg, that entrance into the Toei Shinjuku line is closed right here, this building. This used to be a building. Now they're constructing something else. So the amount of, of construction in Tokyo is crazy. And the reason why, they're earthquaking it, they're renovating it, the mayor or the governor, because Tokyo is not a city, it's a metropolitan area. It's considered one of the 47 prefectures. It's like a state and it's run as such. The headquarters is over there and we're going to get a chance to take a look at that as well. There's the Wendy's. Is that the one you ate at Peso over there across the street? You can see it is really busy. There's about 300 exits. So again, if you're coming to Shinjuku, plan ahead. Use Google Maps and get to know the area. And let me give you an overview of that right now. This is where I am in the city of Tokyo. Uh, Shinjuku is away from the sea a bit. It's uh, on, the, on the far side on the Yamanote line from Tokyo Station. It's an urban jungle, as you can see. That's the south exit, and that's where we're starting right now. Just going around there. A lot of train lines going through here. A lot of shopping, because there's a lot of foot traffic. Makes sense, doesn't it? So let's move out a little bit here. Uh, this is, uh, the I believe this is the east, east side. And that, that's the building that's no longer there right there on the, on the middle of your screen. It's just a construction zone. We'll go through Omoide Yoku, Omoide Yoku Cho, take a look at that. And then uh, wrap it up at Kabuki Cho which should be a lot of fun. We might go on the fringes of Shinjuku Gyoen, you can see there, which is one of the largest parks in Tokyo. It, it costs money to go in there and it closes at 4 p.m., which is something that you should keep a note of. And then we'll head back here, hopefully. Let's see how it goes. You can already see down there, like, it's really a large clearing. That's the KO department store. I wouldn't be surprised if that goes the way as well. But look, if you're looking for vending machines and stuff, go underground because there's a lot of restaurants in the arcade that goes between here and the KO lines. A ton of restaurants. It's a little bit cheaper, maybe underground. It's a lot of quick eats because people that are going between the stations 
people going between the stations want to, to grab a bite. More so than here, these are more drinking establishments on this side of the of uh, Shinjuku Station because this is where the Tokyo Metropolitan Offices are, a lot of office buildings. So you're gonna get a lot of booze establishments. Uh, underneath, underground, you see more like quick bites, 500 yen, get, get a lunch and, and move on. And you can see down the street here. I've live streamed this area before. It's pretty scenic, uh, a lot of restaurants. You know, it's an old area and they're renovating it uh, as we speak. I've done a couple of live streams there, so you don't have, I don't have to go down there uh, right now. I didn't see any massive changes from a couple of years ago, but I'm sure that there's some new buildings. The Sega World is now Gigo. I think a lot of you know that. The game center industry is not exactly booming because of the consoles and the lack of tourism over the last uh, you know, several years has, has led to a, I don't know, destruction of the industry, which is kind of sad but you still find game centers in, in places that you would least expect inside of hotels where people have a lot more free time and you don't have your consoles with you. Although you could take your console on the road now. This is one of the most famous sites here, especially when it rains. You don't see a lot of neon lights, but you do with the Yorobashi camera on this side. This is where the headquarters of Yorobashi camera is. If you keep walking down the street, there's Map Camera, which is one of the great used camera stores. You can find some, maybe the cheapest place to buy any kind of a camera. Down there. Hey, how you doing? Thank you. Well, that was nice. Yeah, and this is, uh, as you can see, the east side, East, east Khan, Higashi Khan. And that neon sign, again, it's something you don't really see that much. And when it rains, the streets are wet. It really does. Uh, glisten on those wet streets it's pretty cool and there's the, the metropolitan building I'm not actually gonna go over there but this is a free observation deck and you have amazing views of Mount Fuji because the city is out of the way going uh, uh, southwest from here and you get really clear views of Mount Fuji on a clear day I highly recommend if you're looking for Mount Fuji to go in the morning because it gets hazy in the afternoon with the sun shine, so it's harder to see over an extended period, or extended distance, I should say. Right, we're gonna cross over to the other side as soon as we can. There's a crossing over there. We're gonna move over next, in about five minutes, we'll be at Omoide Yokocho. There are maps everywhere, and it's in Japanese as well as in English, so it's, it's pretty easy to get around. We're going over to the, when you go to, across the tracks here, so I guess I can show you really quickly. We're here near the KO concourse, and we're gonna be going underneath the tracks here towards Kabukicho, so let's do that. The flickering is something I can't control with live streaming and this Prism app, unfortunately. If you wanna get rid of flickering, you have to have your shutter speed at 100. And I can't control that on, on uh, smartphones. So I, I never understood how Apple can call these pro phones. I mean, you can sort of control it with the apps, but I don't know. The camera app should be a little bit better than what it is. Tons of lockers here. Let's see if they're available. Yeah, a lot of these are available. 500 yen for a pretty big locker. You could fit a child in there. <laughs> I'm saying that because one of my favorite, uh, I shouldn't say favorite, but a movie that was popular when I was a kid was the one with Gary Coleman. Do you guys know that one where he was living in a locker at a bus station? Does anybody remember that movie? What was that called? <laughs> you can see they've, they've knocked down a lot of buildings. You don't have this, I mean, it, it just feels like it's so much more open right now, walking around Shinjuku Station. If you're looking at some of the KO buses, in particular the ones going towards, uh, and the, there's the airport limousine going by. On the other side of this Yorobashi camera building, this used to be like the KO bus terminal, but I, there's some waiting seats and some chairs where you can sit down. If you just want to find a place to sit, you could probably just go around the other side of the building and do so. The post office, which is open 24, I'm not, I think it's 24 hours, is right there. Do you see that mark? That is, means Japan Post. So all of your postcards for the post Patreon uh, uh, supporters went from this building. 
I just put them in there, so they're on the way. It's kind of cool uh, that you get to see the origin as it arrives into your post box. If you want one, there's a link in the description of this video. Let's get a move on. We got a long way to go. All right, the, the friendly airport limousine. Now, let's look at the schedule and the buses here. A lot of you are watching our, our tourists uh, for Narita Airport, 90 minutes, 40 minutes to Haneda. Of course, it's much closer. There's actually a limit on the bags here. You're allowed to check in on, onto the service up to two suitcases, no more than 120 centimeters by 60 by 50, and a weight of 30 kilograms. And I don't know if they're actually going to weigh them, but yeah, they probably know what it's like. The price of it, there's the schedule. I don't see the prices. Oh, here it is. It's, uh, that's expensive. 3,600 yen for adults to Narita and half price for kids and 1,400 to Haneda. So, hope that's useful information, but it's pretty convenient. Leaves from right there. Yeah, I think if you're coming to Shinjuku on the Nanita Express, it might be more fun. But you can just see if you look at the uh, the sign for the uh, underpass. That's a lot. That's a lot of train lines. Marunouchi subway line, the Toei Shinjuku line, which is the city subway line. Keio line, Oedo line, which is also city. JR lines, more than one. Parking garage. pretty crazy and if you go underground <laughs> good luck <laughs> that's all I can say good luck to you the reason I like the bus over the train is that if you have log luggage it's just convenient you leave the luggage underneath it you don't have to worry about it when you put getting it on and off a train sometimes you have to go up and down stairs to get the platforms it can be kind of a hassle so sometimes the bus is more convenient, but you're gonna have to make that call as you plan your trip. I live here, so asking me advice, it, this is not always the best. I'll do my best, but it's hard to do. If you're a Patreon supporter, by the way, on Mondays, Monday mornings, which are Sunday nights in the US, I'll be giving advice uh, to Samurai supporters on a live call-in show. And there's a, a Texas phone number you can call to leave messages. Peso will leave that number. No, no, you don't do it, not yet. We're gonna make that public next month, I think. But right now, we're just kind of giving it a beta test to see if, if it gets used. Oh, there it is, do you see this? The Odaku building is completely gone, and it probably is a good thing, because it certainly was, it was ancient back there. The department store, Odaku department store, was in itself a maze. I got lost in there many times. All right, so we're getting close to uh, Omoide Yokocho, which is the alleys here uh, on this side here. Yeah, Omoide Yokocho. And then we'll go underneath and go towards Kabukicho. Sorry, this side. What am I doing? We're going to walk up here past that big Uniqlo, and then there's an underground passageway where I'm going to... No, you know what? I'm not going to go through the underground passageway. I'll show it to you and then I'll walk through a Moide, Moide Yokocho wrap around to Kabukicho. Let's do this. Now, the, this video is 720p. I might upload it in, in full HD. The reason why is because the signal with all these people is... Download speed in Tokyo is really good. Upload speed, eh, not so good. I think they're making a pedestrian walkway here. That's interesting. That's going to be really useful. Getting around this area with the buses, the taxis all inside of here was kind of a mess. I'm glad that they're doing something with it. There's the entrance to the Odakyu Romance car to Hakone. But there's no department store anymore. I wonder what it's going to be like when they build it. You can see now the walkway has uh, got walls around it. It's a lot cleaner. That's something. At least it feels a lot cleaner. It, smell, it smells a lot cleaner. <laughs> there used to be a lot of, a lot of people uh, that uh, didn't have homes in this area that would, would settle here. 
kind of a, the more tragic underside of, of this part of the city. There's the big camera. Big camera is not so big in Shinjuku. This is more the headquarters of Yodobashi. So between the two big electronic stores, big camera is more Yurakucho, the Ginza area. That's where their big department, their big electronic store is. They got a massive one in Ikebukuro as well. But Yodobashi camera owns Shinjuku. Pretty big. Prices, pretty comparable. They're probably the same. Oh, now you get a chance to look inside. That's what it looks like. Wow! I see you. There's about 10 people behind me, sir. All right, now you can see uh, we're getting closer to that flat area, which is Omoide Yokocho. Not a lot of uh, uh, people there at this time because the restaurants typically don't open in the afternoon, at least not in the past. But we're going to see in just a minute. Yeah, nothing to see here except actually it's interesting to me so there is a lot to, for me to see because you can see all the way to the other side of the station which is rare some of the entrances to the tokyo metro are also under construction it's going to be really pretty but this just this just means that shibuya is kind of chaotic because the construction still continues there and then shibuya is i, I sorry shibuya is a little bit chaotic and shinjuku is becoming a little bit like that but with all the exits and entrances, this might be really useful to watch if you're thinking about staying here because now you have a, a di better idea. I, I have no idea what the signal is going to be like in Omoide Yokocho. And technically, I think, I don't even know if you're allowed to film in there anymore. They've been a little bit strict. But I'm willing to take that, that risk. Are we about halfway? Is it about halfway? About halfway, maybe? Um, if you haven't already, make sure you click that like button. Let people know that this is something that you're interested in. There's a lot of places here. As the yen becomes 153.5 to the dollar, which is blowing my mind, I think it's going to coalesce around this, this number, 145 to 155, for a while. But you, if you go outside of the station, you can probably save about 1,000 yen getting discount tickets to certain places. To Shinosaka, 13,000 uh, yen. I think it's about 1,000 yen. Sorry, it's about eight, 870 yen cheaper. And to Kyoto, it's about, I don't know, about 800 yen cheaper. So getting a Shinkansen ticket from here, these are non-reserve tickets. If you don't have a JR Rail Pass, you can save a couple thousand yen off of the price. And you can get discounted airline tickets and, and uh, event tickets here, depending. And there's a lot of competition, but um, I would not change my money here. Again, the best thing to do would be to take, so you're getting that exchange rate plus probably a commission on it. So we'll see. The best is to take, the best is to take, uh, take it from the wall, from the ATM. All right, this is Omoide Yokocho. This used to be the old uh, shacks uh, after World War II was bombed, bombed the city. They, these shacks have, they seemingly been here for, for quite a long time. Unchanged? That's not quite true. A lot of them have been renovated on the inside. You can see they're kind of closed right now, but the, the grilling yakitori, the motsunabe, which are the uh, uh, organs of beef and pork. Hello. That motsunabe is the most famous uh, dish of this area. Excuse me. You'll see this, the pots of stew, motsunabe, outside the doors of some of the more traditional places. But because foreign tourists don't particularly like that, they actually, uh, I'm seeing less and less of it here. So if that's something you were thinking about getting, probably not though. It's not bad. But you have places like this where people are shoulder to shoulder eating uh, ramen or, uh, is that ramen? I don't know, because the shop's changed so much, I'm not really sure. This ramen shop is quite famous and I've had many late night, you can see there's a line there, many late night um, eats in this area. But I don't know, since tourism returned, it's just a lot of tourists, so you don't see a lot of locals anymore. I kind of just prefer to go home now. Koko Ichiban, some of the, there's a couple of chains that came in here. 
queen lockers. You probably, if you have bags and stuff, I would highly recommend that you probably use these coin lockers because you don't want to uh, put them on the floor inside the restaurants, just a little bit of a tip. Usually you don't come with baggage unless it's like a briefcase or something, like a really small bag to Omoide Yokocho. But uh, yeah, that's what you get here. It's, um, it's way more interesting at night. You see they have uh, autumn leaves in the fall and they have cherry blossoms in the spring to kind of give it an ambiance to cover up the, uh, the, the power lines and things like that above. But it's very scenic. If you come here at night, it's really scenic. And uh, yeah, it's kind of a, it's a fun walk through. All right, now we're, we're walking over toward Kapukicho. See, that's the new tower up there, the entertainment uh, building. Maybe we'll take a, a quick peep, peek around. But if you turn to the left here, towards the Metropolitan Building, you'll see where I took that picture of the postcard that I sent you. This is a little bit of a secret because you don't find too many people there anymore. But that crosswalk, you'll see sometimes photographers or big movie cameras taking pictures. It's a, it's a little bit above ground, so you have an amazing shot of the city over there. I don't know why more tourists don't know about it, but it's, again, you have to walk a little ways to get there. You can take better pictures if you get access to one of the windows from there, but this crosswalk does a pretty good job. And there you go, there's Omoide Yokocho. I don't know what they're gonna do with this area. There's some talk that it might not be around they're they're very strongly trying to preserve it but i don't know if there's an earthquake that happens it's probably not the place you want to be there's a sobo line going by right now going towards uh, mitaka and the ghibli museum if you were thinking of doing that all right let's let's keep let's get a move on that's right the reason why i brought it here is a simple fact that you get a Shinjuku postmark, which is kind of cool. I, the reason I brought you here is because I wanted to show you some of the old photos. I like that they do this. Gives you an idea of how the, the region has changed. They call it the Shinjuku photo memory. Very cool. Some of these photos are too old, but and they, they have been changing every now and then. This one's from 1970. You can see probably a little polluted. but certainly a lot more tranquil and, and quiet. There's a Shinjuku History Museum, which is really cool to go take a look at. Oh, there we go. Wow. Takara no Baba, that's a couple of stations away. You can see the train coming here. Again, that's, that, I don't know why they're showing Takara no Baba, but that's what it looked like back in the 70s. Japan has, uh, has really come a long way. They had those old electric buses. It reminds me a little bit of Eastern Europe. <laughs> Look at it. All right, this is Nishiguchi, where we're going right now. Boy, that looks wide open. No skyscrapers back then. And here's where they're doing the construction right now. The Odaku uh, department store. I believe that this is, yeah. No, no, this is Nishiguchi. It looked like that? That's fascinating. That's where we're going right now, I believe. Let's go. A lot of cardboard houses um, under the bridge here. I, I don't know what the city can do about it. Maybe more, better... Um, there's a there's a, um, a park. Wow, a lot of things have changed here. And I'm talking about right here. There's a smoking area that wasn't here six months ago that I remember. Hey, Iken's here. Thanks, John. It'd be nice if they made modern structures with replica. I yes, that would be pretty cool. They're trying it. I haven't actually checked it out in a while, but I wonder what they're doing with Harajuku Station. They're supposed to be rebuilding it. And there's the uh, Shinjuku, the Shonen Shinjuku line. 
going by. And we're now in Kabukicho on Yasukuni Dori. If you were to go straight, yes, you would get to Ichigaya and Yasukuni straight ahead this way. Let's get a move on. Now this building went up real fast. And we can take a quick look, check it out, go around uh, this part of Kabukicho. It, does, it doesn't take, take a very long time to do something like that. There's a lot of um, restaurants and bars inside of there. I don't know how the signal is gonna be like in, in Kabukicho here. But if I were you, I would be going down these alleyways. We're gonna go straight down uh, Kabukicho's uh, main artery. But at night, sometimes going local is pretty cool. Going down those uh, narrow alleys, you start to discover um, those bright lights. I don't know if you saw Lost in Translation, some of it was filmed here. It was a different world. I think it was 2002, 2001 that Sofia Coppola filmed that with Bill Murray and uh, uh, who was the other one? Scarlett Johansson, I think, or some, somebody like that. It's a different world. Here's the uh, famous sign marking uh, Kabukicho's main entrance into uh, this part of the city. And it's different. This one's wider, and I think at night it can get quite crowded. I filmed the opening of the Shinjuku episode uh, right here. Let me see if I have the thumbnail for that. I think I do somewhere. Yeah, I filmed it right there and it was so crowded. I had to wait for the traffic lights to, for, for it to change in order to... Uh, I'm, I'm looking for it. I don't see it. What? Oh, here it is. So if you haven't seen this episode yet, check it out. It'll give you a really good overview of the food options here uh, with uh, a, one of the tour companies. I, that experience was pretty good, I thought. The video just passed 100,000 views, which is kind of cool. That was, uh, when did I release it? About 12 days ago, I think. So here's the vibe of the day. It's not that great because a lot of the restaurants are still closed. They don't open until 5. They're what we would call izakaya, which are Japanese pubs. And of course, you know, they make their money after dark. But I don't know, maybe they should open in, the, in around 3 p.m. for the tourists. Maybe that's like a good idea, I don't know. What do you guys think? Because some people aren't on Japanese standard time, mentally. <laughs> like it's 5 p.m. somewhere. All right, let's, let's uh, hightail it over towards that new Kabukicho tower to give it a quick look-see, and then we'll, we'll curve around to the Godzilla before we uh, uh, make our way back to the south exit. This is fun. I'm glad that you guys are here. If you're looking for yakiniku, Shin Okubo maybe might be a better area than Kabukicho to eat. Grilled beef, that's uh, probably a lot cheaper because the rent is a lot less maybe a little bit more open. It's probably more colorful. It's more like, I don't know, it, it's more of an ethnic feeling neighborhood. Certainly, uh, you know, Korea is very famous for its yakiniku and that influence is pretty strong in, in uh, Shin Okubo, Okubo region, neighborhood. All right, you can see right, <laughs> right away. Do you see up there, the claw? Stay tuned because in about, uh, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty ominous, in about five minutes or less, we're gonna be back right here. Super Mr. Crazy Man's here. Have you ever thought about doing an episode for anime for the fans who have tried to, and have you tried the ramen museum? I actually made an episode on my old channel. I don't encourage watching, watching it because I, we did that part ways in a f real friendly manner. But I was, uh, I used to work at Shueisha where they make Shonen Jump and uh, I used those connections to get inside of the editorial room and made an episode on uh, how they produced the Shonen Jump. So we got, I got to see some of the covers and the, the uh, early art for One Piece, for example, and talked to some of the ed editorial uh, supervisors about uh, the process. And that was really neat, including interviewing some of the, uh, uh, create, not some of the creators, but some of the people that were very influential in, in making Shonen Jump. 
So I've done it before, but it's really hard to get access. They're very, very particular with copyright and things like this, adding in notices and whatnot, and it's kind of a hassle to work with big companies like Toho Cinema and Shueisha. There's lawyers involved. It's not as much fun as you think to go in and get access. It was really hard work. It took meetings, months to set up. I'm going to pan up, as you can see here. This used to be where there was a Toho Cinema back in the 1960s in the daytime. And this skyscraper is, you can actually go up to here and get a, a, a kind of a view of, of Shinjuku at night. There's a hotel up there as well. And then I believe that's kind of the hotel. It's something of a luxury hotel. But the first few floors are restaurants and there's a game center up there on the third floor. It's kind of neat and I'm not sure if it's my cup of coffee. I'm saying that because there's a Starbucks right there. But I'm glad that this it does exist. And uh, I don't know, this just always had kind of a dirty feel, this plaza. I remember, I remember being, there's a lot of love hotels this direction. I remember coming to this place in 98 when I first came and it was kind of dodgy <laughs> then. 25 years ago. They've really cleaned it up though, but these buildings are the same and it's at night it gets a little bit eventful. I'm just saying, you know, Kabuki just changed a lot. It was a lot more dangerous, maybe the more, most dangerous section of, of Japan, but it's really cleaned up in particular. Maybe if you go a little bit deeper, it feels a little bit dirtier, more adult entertainment. This used to be a Sega world, by the way, but now it's a Gigo mostly making money with UFO catchers, which are these uh, crane games, which is kind of a disappointing thing for me, but. Michael Sasano's in the house, aloha. Love some Shijuku walk adventures. Brandy is on the way, yes. And here's the beer to celebrate. All right, right above us now is where Godzilla is located. Scaremeister writes it here, honestly, John, it's the most fun part of Tokyo. Is that guy coughing at me? He's like, I'm gonna give you something. Let's see if it sticks. We'll find out now in 72 hours. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Uh, you can go up on the elevator. There's a cafe up there and you can get a little bit closer. But the view comes when you go down this street, which is where we're headed right now. The new Toho Cinema's on the left side. I've heard they're pretty nice. I went with my friend Greg Lamb from the channel Life Where I'm From to see Dune, Dune 2. And the cinema there is really nice. It's something to celebrate. <laughs> it's, it wasn't IMAX, but it was pretty, uh, pretty good uh, cinema. For a thousand yen more, which is like seven bucks, we sat in a premium seat, which gave us walls and stuff. So I couldn't talk to Greg, but you shouldn't talk in a movie theater anyway. And the Dune was like three hours, and I'm guessing that Greg slept through part of it. It was hard to see because of that wall. How do you, you can't, you can't nudge somebody. Hey, you're missing it. I can't actually go to Shinjuku Gyo and I believe they still require reservations to get in there. I'm not, I'm not sure, but you need to make reservations because they don't want it overcrowded with, uh, with people inside there and I don't have a reservation so going there is kind of pointless. All right, here you go. What do you think they're taking pictures of? Anybody, anybody want to venture a guest? What do they see? Is something happening? Did we ca What's with this music? I hear it's, it's, it sounds kind of dramatic. Is he gonna spit fire or something? Oh, if he did, that'd be so epic. Let's just let's just hold on for a second. Do it, Godzilla. There's a car coming by, just make sure you're not in the middle of the road. It might... 
Oh, here, look, look. That's gotta look awesome at night. That just scared some kids up there, I'm sure. That's pretty cool. All right, here comes some more. If only he moved. That's gotta be so cool after dark. All right, the show's over. That was timed right. I <laughs> like looking up at, well, that was timed right, wasn't it? What do you guys think? Leave me a comment below. Is this uh, one of the coolest parts of the city or what? Like right there. There's a thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I don't know, I, I don't come here that often. Since I got married, there's not a lot of reason to go out drinking and boozing with the boys, for example. But I did see, <laughs> I did see Peter uh, a couple of days ago and that was fun. But with, uh, with Leo and the schedule and everything, yeah, you don't, I don't get out like I used to. All right, let's go to the next side of uh, Shinjuku as we make our way around back to the south exit. We're gonna go past the kitty cat. And you know what I'm talking about, this 3D cat that just sticks out of the, the uh, signage. It's one of the, I think it was the first sign in the world like this. Maybe there were others, but it was certainly the one that made the biggest impact in this area. This is interesting, they have like street food. There's some mochi grilling. Chocolate dango, really? Interesting. The cat billboard is in this direction, everybody. And so is the Don Quixote right there. Um, if, you, if you're just spending a little bit of time in Japan, this might be really good to go in to check it out. This is maybe the most cramped of them, but that might be the most interesting. You're pretty much shoulder to shoulder walking through the aisles that go way above your head. It's not the place you want to be if there's a, an earthquake. <laughs> Don Quixote, if, if I feel any shaking, I'm getting out of there. You're gonna be buried in, in goods, boxes. A lot of people. Now there used to be a fruit stand that had been there for, I think it was like a hundred years? Or at least after World War II, that is no longer there. They sold out because they couldn't stay in business during the, you know. So. All right, bye bye Kabuki Cho. I hope this was interesting for you. This side of the city is really vi uh, more of a nightlife place. And now we're going into the more the daytime place. This is more the shopping district over back towards the south exit. Um, the next intersection is kind of key, not just because of the cat billboard, and I'm gonna explain that as we walk, walk further down the road. Oh, there's a Hanamaru Udon. I think you can get a bowl of udon for like two bucks inside of there. Usually they're in the basement. You can tell with the flower and the orange signage if you can't read uh, hiragana. Bowls of udon are great because you can also pick the tempura like cafeteria style if you want to get uh, if you want to get you know tempura shrimp or kabocha pumpkin or satsuma imo. There's lots of stuff you pick. You can just load it up. You end up spending twenty bucks on a bowl of tempura pretty much. If, that's what you want, but it's nice to dip the uh, tempura in that dashi's uh, soup stock because it, it kind of takes, I don't know, takes the oiliness out of it a little bit. All right, there you go. There's the signage right there as we walk past it from a direction that no, nobody really shows you. Doesn't look that special, does it? It's just kind of a digital sign right here. There's the kitty cat. So remember this image, it's not so stunning. 
Oh yeah, this is where the uh, vegetable stand was. We, we got really good views of the um, square watermelon. I saw my first square watermelon right here. And now they've opened up kind of a, a tourist trap. This is definitely a tourist trap, everybody. It looks like something out of Ghibli. I don't know. I wouldn't eat here unless I had no choice. Oh, I just saw some of the go-karts go by. And now we're at Higashi Gucci, the East Egg. I want to tell you guys a note here. This is, we get on the other side, we'll see the cat billboard a little bit better. But the S Studio Alta, which is where I'm underneath right now, one of the great meeting spots of Shinjuku is going to get demolished. The news is out, and this is the next big building to really leave us. It's, a, it's an iconic building in the sense like it's, I would uh, meet friends there, well, let's meet in front of Studio Alta, and I knew exactly where to go. So it was a pretty significant place, and now, yeah, it's it's going away, so kind of sad about that. I can tell me the go karts at night are, are pretty exciting. If I did the go karts, I'd probably do it at night. <laughs> I think I would want that that dimension. All right, let's take a look here. We're gonna look back as we cross the street and. Uh, See if that cat, cat uh, digital sign, digital billboard looks any good in the daytime. It's much better at night, of course. Shinjuku. I think if you're coming during the daytime, Kabuki Cho is not that great. It's interesting, I guess. You can walk through there. If you've got kids, you definitely want to go in the daytime. But if you don't have kids and you know you want to have some fun, you probably want to go to. Uh, you probably want to go uh, at night. All right, let's spend about a minute here and take a look at the sign here. The connection is weak right now, so there's a good chance that you might not see anything. It's a lot of people. I'll, I'm going to give it about the 30 more seconds and then we're going to move on. But a lot of tourists will wait here because that sign has been, uh, you know, on a lot of social media. Again, the flickers because you really need to have it at 100 shutter speed or, you know, you can change it to PAL 25 or 50 and that also gets rid of the flicker. Because I don't think, I don't think it really matters NTSC and, and PAL anymore unless you play it off of the camera. When you take it, anything into editing software, 25p will get rid of the flicker most most cases. 50p definitely does. Then you can use any shutter speed that you want. Boy, it's loud with the guy with the megaphone. Oh, hello. I was watching your screen. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was doing schoolwork there, and I saw like, you were screaming. Oh, cool. Like, so I was asking why. I've been watching you since last year. Oh, wow. Hey, well, here you go. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, oh, so you I, live here now? Yeah, I live here now. I've oh, been, cool. I moved um, last Monday, so like around 10 days ago. Oh, the kitty cat. Everyone, we're, they're waiting for this one. Me Metropolitan Police Department has sponsored the kitty cat. As the kitty cat watches all the people down below. It's kind of cool. Wow. So you live in Shinjuku, this area? I live near Yogi Wehara. Oh, that's better. <laughs> I don't think I can I can manage living here. Yeah, yeah. It, but I go through here for school, and I'm so proud of like every single day. Where, where do you go? Uh, I go near Shinjuku. Okay. Yeah, so I, I walk from this exit, like just straight to Shinjuku. I don't think I could live in this area. It's too yeah. crazy. And it's like so noisy. Like I know. Like, but it, it's really hard, but like the area where I live is like really nice though. Like, yeah, that's a lot more relaxed. Yeah. What line is that that ends at Uehara? The Odaku. The Odaku line, yeah, right, yeah. okay. Yeah. And the, is it at the Choda line goes there? Uh, yeah, the Choda line. The Choda line, line as well, yeah. yeah. 
It's a nice area. I had friends who used to live there, but it's kind of pricey. It I just, yeah, it's kind of pricey. I live in a share house though, so it's a lot cheaper. So you have like a 1K or something? Yeah, yeah. So you can like one room and like the kitchen and the washing are all shares. Yeah. But you have, you have like a mini kitchen? Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. Washing machine outside? Yeah, yeah, I have a washing machine outside. Outside? I, yeah, see, I had that too. It's, it's not as bad as it, you think it is. Well, cool. Thanks for coming to say hi. I appreciate it. Yeah, maybe I'll see you around. Yeah, it's right. a small city. Yeah. All right, bye-bye. Right, well, that was cool. Cool. So, let's, so this is the JR station where you would come out, the east exit. And we're going to walk. I just wanted to take you just a little bit over here to show you this side of it before we, we uh, wrap around back to Shinjuku South Exit. A lot of protesters out today. Thanks for, thanks, by the way, if you're watching the playback, thank you for, I forgot to ask you your name, but I'm really appreciative that you came out. And uh, anybody who finds me in a live stream, and he was studying over there at the Mr. Donuts, how cool that was. I, I still got some of the, you found me with the old logo there. So I hand these out if you if you do find me. I got a new bag, so I started to bring them more with me. So I have them. Sometimes I didn't. Now this is where you go during the daytime. If, in particular for locals, I'm just going to go out to the center for a second. This is Shinjuku Sanchome, and uh, this is where the. Uh, Department stores are, Isetan for example, that's now where you would find the crazy expensive fruits for example, down in the basement there. Uh, this is where a lot of the, the shops have stores and uh, they open at 11. I don't know why Japan opens at 11, it's kind of late, you think maybe 9 would be better. But that's sort of the law maybe, the rules, not quite sure. This is the big camera competitor to Yorobashi. It's a smaller shop. This is a really old building. It's kind of, a, kind of makes me feel claustrophobic inside of this one. So I usually go over to the Yorobashi to get the stuff. I used to be more impartial to Yorobashi camera, which is uh, the big shop in Akihabara. But then I moved to uh, closer to Yurakucho and I started going to big camera now. So there, there you go. Yodabashi camera is right here, right next to the big camera. It's like an exclamation point. Yeah, you can have your little corner shop, but we own Shinjuku. Old neon lights, that's kind of neat. It's 2.12 p.m. Thank you for that, Jason. We're going to move around here. Just a side note, WRX Turbo is in the house. It feels so good to say that. Welcome aboard. All right. So, one of my favorite areas is inside of here, behind Shinjuku San Chome. That was kind of creepy. Like, whoa, somebody looking at me. Inside of here, um, there's a lot of pubs some chain shops uh, you know you can you can find some eateries restaurants I guess let's let's just kind of wrap around inside of here if you go this direction it'll take you towards Shinjuku Gyoen Shinjuku Gyoen is the Shinjuku Park this is where right now the cherry blossoms some of the varieties are in bloom but the Soma Yoshino are pretty much done off of the trees just a few hanging on the late bloomers I'd say it's maybe right now 15% bloomed, so you get the it's kind of the feeling of the cherry blossoms right now, but certainly it's not like it was a week ago, which is a shame and it's always sad to say goodbye to them, but this year was short. It was late and short and that's a little bit disappointing, but that's life. You don't always get what you want. And, and this year, we didn't because it was so late and short, but now the weather is warm. If you, if you, I'm, I'm sweating right now walking around in my jacket. There's this, the uh, Ginza Lion Beer Hall. That's Yellow Star makes me think it's uh, connected with Sapporo. Sapporo Beer. Let's see if we can go take a look at the, at the beer fair. 
they make it they make it seem like uh, a German beer hall. And there's a really strong the, the history of this place might go back to World War II. I'm not sure, but there's a, a strong connection with the um, German beer makers and Japanese beer makers. When I first came to Japan, I was startled at how good Japanese beer was compared to like Budweiser. It's 2,000 yen for pizza. This is a salami pizza. That's like a paella pizza, it looks like. So it's about, I don't know, $12 for that. And usually uh, pizzas at pubs are not good. But they seem to have some pretty extravagant looking Japanese cuisine. Check out these uh, nikumaki. I guess like kind of a meat rolls. Butaniku maki. Some shabu shabu. So it's kind of impressive. The fair is not. Oh, and they have they have some lunch a lunch menu. Interesting. Look at this. There's a tempo, tendon for sixteen hundred yen. So you definitely get the best deals at lunchtime. So you could eat your onigiri and you have your, your 300 yen convenience store dinner and really splurge on lunch if you wanted to save money. I know there's a lot of, uh, of visitors that maybe in their 20s that uh, really try to stretch their money, stretch, the, stretch uh, the amount that they pay, travel on Zip Air or uh, Air Japan, which is ANA's new venture. Yeah, and if you walk down here, you can see that, as I said, a lot of pubs you walk down there, there's some more outdoor pubs. We can sit outside in alleys and, and such. If you're getting closer to Yotsuya, it's got a, kind of a more laid back vibe. Sort of like Golden Guy, which I didn't hit on this because Golden Guy is sort of like, I don't want to say jump the shark, but it doesn't feel like it did 20 years ago when Anthony Bourdain introduced it. Look at that, we have a, like a gachapon center. I think this used to be a game center. Used to be a lot of little game centers that you could sneak in here, get purikara and you know, like more of a, a young vibe, but it seems more now geared towards tourists. There's a hub ale, a hub ale house. I haven't been there in 12 years. Since 2009, well, more than that. It's been a while. Anyone have any questions? We're getting close to the end. I kind of wanted to stretch this out to exactly one hour and I've done, done a pretty good job of that. Oh, there's a Don Quixote right here. Yes. I did not know that. This is, or is, it, is this the backside of it? I don't come down this road very often. We're gonna wrap around, Let, let's cut right through here. Oh, we can't, the signal's, the signal's gone rogue again. All right, underneath here is where the, the uh, JR, Highway buses are leaving. There's a JR uh, bus station underneath here. There's also a really good information center. If the signal is still uh, working right now. They speak English inside of here. So if you ever have a question about anything in, in Shinjuku or Tokyo in general, they do a really good job of it, I thought. Uh, they've been on Japanese news a lot, where the tourists challenge the information center on, in, on things about Shinjuku and they, they like, will make the calls for you. They want to make sure that they that you leave very satisfied. So I've been very impressed with this information center. Whoa. Arigatouzaimasu. That bicycle shouldn't be there, but I knocked it down, so I picked it up and a nice lady helped me. Yeah, this information center uh, is worth uh, checking out if you if you get the chance. It's got a lot of uh, brochures and stuff. They've really cleaned up underneath here as well. It looks nice. I think it's a smoking area. All right, let's go up here because we are we have now circumnavigated. Is that the word? We circled around. Sorry for the buffering. Let's let's get back up here. The signal will be better when we get to street level. We're underground right now. All 
All right, so if you if you look in this direction, you're gonna have there's an IKEA, IKEA down there. What? This is where you would walk in this direction. A lot of these people are probably going to Shinjuku Gyoen to do a little cherry blossom viewing of what's left. Oh gosh. Looks like the signal isn't too good, but I appreciate you guys hanging in there. If you have any questions, leave in the comments below, and I'll take you in another area of Tokyo maybe uh, next week as we get a, a look at all the changes that happened over the last uh, couple of years. I'm kind of shocked seeing them today. I hope this was useful for you. Mata ne.